this is Alex, Paul and Jess, a team of hustlers who have one aim, to make you, the public, part with your hard-earned cash. In this series, the hustlers will attempt to pull off some of their toughest scams yet, and to do so, they'll appear as you've never seen them before. This is The Real Hustle Undercover. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show, this shopkeeper gets an unwanted delivery I don't know what this is, nobody's ordered it. Danielle Lloyd gets emotional. I actually feel like I could burst out in tears right now. And charity isn't always just about giving. Oh my God. All the people on this show have been hustle for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. This is the King's Road in the heart of Chelsea, home to some of the most exclusive antique emporiums in the country, selling items worth thousands of pounds each. They cater for a host of wealthy clients, but today they're not the only ones keen to get their hands on such rare and valuable objects. This is the surprise package. Paul and Alex are undercover as delivery men. Paul's in charge, got it, got it. and Alex is his Greek-speaking assistant. This red sofa needs delivering to one of the nearby antique shops. Oh, sorry. Well, I've got the sofa here. This is 610. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's odd. The shopkeeper was clearly not expecting the delivery. Somebody's ordered it, so they haven't told you about it. It's definitely for here. We put it there. But Paul won't take no for an answer. He seems intent on giving the sofa away for nothing. Most unlike him. I'm taking it away for no use. I'm just a delivery driver, mate. Oh, we'll, we'll put it right there. It'll go fine. Just hold this open for me. Um, Let me put that there. I'll be right back. Come on, in you go. Yeah. Oh. Finally, Paul, the bullshit delivery man, gets his way. Much to the shopkeeper's annoyance, the sofa ends up in his shop. How do you know that you're at the shop? Well, yeah, it's an empty shop. Nobody's going to order the I've got to come back because I need you to sign this, so we, we've got to sort it out. All right, look, I'll be as quickly as I can. He's not happy. The sofa's an unwelcome addition to his day. But pretty soon, that'll be the least of his worries. Excuse me. Paul returns to the shop to eat some humble pie. It's one of these apartments here, they've given him a 610, but it's not a 610, this is 610. It seems his company has made a mistake with the address, and he and Alex need to take the sofa away. All right. The shopkeeper is only too happy to see the back of it, and the delivery man. It's up there, yeah, but they're not in, so... But little does he know that nearly £4,000 worth of his stock has just been swiped from right under his nose. So how have the hustlers done it? Let's go back and see. Stage one was the delivery. For this elaborate scam to work, the boys had to time it just right. They knew what time the shopkeeper would make his regular daily trip to the post office and had to make sure the sofa was inside the shop when he left. Once the shopkeeper was well out the way, it was time for what you didn't see. Stage two, the steal. 
But with the shop door securely locked and the keys safe in the Mark's pocket, this wasn't a case of breaking and entering. It didn't need to be. Because Jess was already inside. Now it was a race against time. After putting on her telephone earpiece, Jess got to work. First, she went straight for a rare pewter bowl worth £500. Then, she helped herself to this bronze statue with a market value of £1,200. She'd already made the trip worthwhile, but time was running out. The shopkeeper was on his way back. In less than a minute, he'd catch Jess red-handed. The whole scam was in danger of going badly wrong. Excuse me, sir. Do you know where Parsons Green Tube Station is? But there was no need to worry. The hustlers had it covered. This was stage three of the scam. The hold-up. The shopkeeper was waylaid by a lost tourist. But that was no tourist. It was Alex. After delivering the sofa earlier, Alex had headed straight back to the van to get ready for this moment. A quick change, and he transformed himself from a Greek delivery man into a well-dressed passerby. Is there a nearest tube station? Full of Broadway. It was now his job to stall the mark for as long as possible, whilst pretending to be on the phone, which allowed Jess to listen in on her earpiece. If you get a Knights Bridge, would that, would that be the perfect? Yeah. Alex's confused tourist act bought Jess some valuable extra stealing time. That's a pair of candlesticks, worth a cool £2,000. Is there yeah. no bus from here? Oh, where could I take the bus from? Um. Thank you very much, sir. You've been very kind. OK, you've got about 30 seconds before he opens the door. That was close. Hello, mate. And what do you know? Just as the mark was opening the door... It's not your place. Paul arrived to put stage four into action. The getaway. Another quick change for Alex, and he was Paul's assistant again. The mark had no idea it was the same guy he'd just been talking to on the street. And he was more than happy to watch them carry the sofa straight out the door. He even held it open for them. Oh. He said light stuff, light stuff. Of course, it's only a matter of minutes before the shopkeeper notices that several small but expensive items have mysteriously disappeared. But they, and his precious antiques, are long gone. So what does the Mark think has just happened? So I think as I spoke to the one guy at my desk, um, the other guy walked out with it. Very quickly, we didn't even notice it while they were there. He's right about one thing. The theft was very quick. But how did Jess know exactly what to go for? Simple. Earlier in the week, she'd visited the shop posing as a browsing customer. Still have a look around. Thank you very much. And whilst no one was looking, she photographed the most stealable items. Thank you. Thank you. And later in the den, whilst Alex prepped the sofa, she and Paul identified the most valuable pieces to target. Well, that's clever. I shouldn't have let that guy in at all with that sofa. You are under no obligation to accept a parcel that you don't think that you've ordered. If it's been delivered for someone in your business, call them up, check. If it's for someone in your household, do the same. And don't feel you've got to give in just because a delivery man is getting a little bit stroppy. How's it going, man? The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some. So who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, I feel sick. They give you the inside track. It's not so bad. And learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. As soon as you see them walk away, you're like, 
I felt so awful afterwards. <sighs> oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is model Danielle Lloyd. I'm feeling really nervous, actually. I'm not good at being a bad person, because I'm, I'm totally usually really honest, so I'm not sure how it's going to go. Time for Danielle to meet the hustlers and find out what's in store. How are you? <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh, no. Don't be nervous. <laughs> You're going to steal somebody's bag from a cafe and, uh, and come back here with somebody else's belongings. All right. This scam is called Mind My Bag. It's a classic bag snatch. But a clearly worried Danielle won't be completely alone. It's going to take three people, all working together in perfect sync, to pull it off. Take a minute. These guys are going to go and get into position. You guys are ready, right? I'm ready. All right. See you. Bye. Paul and Jess head off to get themselves into position. When they've selected a mark, they'll text Danielle to make her entrance. Jess enters first. It's important that people think that she and Paul are strangers. Paul follows closely behind, with a deliberately scruffy look. All they need now is a mark, but all the customers seem to be keeping their bags close by. So the hustlers relax and wait. Two new customers arrive and sit nearby. This lady leaves her bag behind her on the floor. Perfect. Now, she's the mark. Jess sends a message telling Danielle that the scam is on. Jess has given Danielle exact details of the mark and which table she should sit at. Can I get um, a hot chocolate, please? I'll pay for it now, yeah? Danielle orders a drink and makes sure she pays there and then. This is to ensure any staff don't stop her when she exits with the Mark's bag. As instructed, Danielle positions herself behind the Mark. Everyone is now in position. Jess will ask the girl to mine her bags, then go to the toilet. Paul will then create a diversion by attempting to steal Jess's bags. If all goes to plan, this should draw the mark away from her own bag long enough for Danielle to take it. Seeing that the mark has been left on her own, Jess decides this is the perfect moment to get the scam into action. Can you smell my bags for me a second? Thank you. Jess has played her part. Now it's Paul's turn. Danielle's weight is nearly up. There was a girl sitting there, is this her? I think she just left. As planned, the mark does the right thing and stops Paul leaving with Jess's bags. But in doing so, leaves her own bag unattended. This is Danielle's moment. She has to act now. No, but she was sitting there. I thought she just left, I'm sorry. Is it yours? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Danielle walks straight past the mark and out of the cafe. Having returned to her seat, thinking she'd performed a good deed, she discovers that her own bag is gone and has no idea where to. steel was done to perfection. But is Danielle pleased with her work? I've got my arm proper shaking. I feel so 
I don't know how I feel, I just feel terrible. When I was walking down the streets, I could feel my legs just shaking. I was waiting for someone to come running behind me. If that was me, I'd be so upset, because like, you have your life in your handbag. I've got an SLR camera in there. I do photography, so I'm pretty much screwed now. I don't even want to talk about it. I just feel like I've done something really, really bad, and I actually feel like I could burst out in tears right now. Everyone always tells you not to leave your bags on the tender, but you don't really pay much attention. I've definitely learned my lesson. I won't be leaving my bags anywhere. Still to come, Paul's not feeling too charitable. You've been told to move along. I'm just doing no, my job. I don't know who you, you are. And it's a dog's life for this mark. There's poo everywhere, all right? This is Carnaby Street, home to countless fashion shops to which locals and tourists flock in their millions each year. And where there's people spending money, there are plenty of charity workers trying to get a slice. But whilst the majority are genuine and above board, some aren't quite so squeaky clean. Welcome to the Give and Take. You may not have heard of TRH Animal Care, but it's a cause that Jess feels very strongly about. I just need a signature, thank you very much. So much so that she's taken to the streets to gather signatures and any spare cash. Hi guys, can you sign my petition to help stop cruelty to animals? Oh yeah, of Thank you very much, you just yeah. sign there, that'd be great. There's need two peas or one peas or ten peas or pounds or 20 pound notes or 50 pound notes. <laughs> Yay! Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks guys, have a great day, Bye. thank you. Excuse me. Considering that it's a charity that no one's ever heard of, she's not doing too badly. After all, no one can say no to an animal-based charity. Thank you very much, thank you. Have you got any pennies or anything that you don't need? That would be much appreciated as well. But did Jess spend all day in the rain just to collect a few pence and some signatures? Of course not. Because she wasn't alone. Paul was nearby, keeping an eye on things. Excuse me. Could you please sign my petition to help stop cruelty to animals? I just need to get as many names as I can. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. That's true. Thank you very much. Excuse me, this girl, she's going to ask you for money in a minute. I wouldn't do it if I were you. You've been told to move along. I'm just doing no, my job. I don't know to do who you here, are. You? Can you please just leave me alone? Let me do my Seriously, job. Seriously, if I were you, I just wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't even yeah. give her a, a, thank your you. address. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't thanks. give you your address. Yeah. You've been yeah. conning people I'm all not week. asking you for your yeah, address. I told you I'm really sorry. It appears that Paul has rumbled Jess for the charlatan that she is and is warning people not to give her money. But why? What a weirdo, eh? <laughs> because whilst Jess was getting people to reach into their pockets, Paul was reaching into their bags. In a split second, this lady's purse that contains her passport as well as her money and credit cards is out of her bag and into Paul's umbrella. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. And she's not the only one who gave away more than she planned. I would just stay away from her, are you? Her camera. I don't know who he is, just to... And just like that, the TRH charity is doing very well for itself. Oh. My. God. No, I haven't got my camera in my bag anymore. I had my camera with me today before I left my house, and then it's in the, it's in the case because I had it. I don't have my pass. Did you have it when you left home? Yeah, because I. Oh my god! Passport, card, ID. You think you're doing a nice thing, just helping out a charity, and within what? 10 seconds, not even that, my camera's gone. I wouldn't have even been able to give a proper description. All I could have said is that he had a navy blue coat on, and that is it. If you find yourself in a situation where you do become distracted, then just make sure that you're always 100% aware of where your belongings are, especially in busy areas. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. 
The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing, but of course the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Alex is out in a Brighton bar to see if he can win some free drinks. We've got a little challenge for you. Whoever can do this, I'll buy them a drink. Oh, okay. If you can't do this, you buy me a drink. Okay. All right, fair enough? Yeah. All right. And to even prove that I can buy a drink. <laughs> there you go. So look, the idea is you've got to grab that 20 from underneath that bottle. The bottle can't fall over okay. and you're not allowed to touch the bottle. What? Go on, Stevie, you go first. We can't just see it. So you went for the speedy yeah. magician sort of <laughs> tablecloth thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna make it a bit slower. A bit slower for Ashley, okay. Okay. Alright, okay, that's Ashley's go there. Get the 20 quid, but the bottle can't fall over. <laughs> Alright. Time's up. Ready to show you? Okay, hands off the table, please. 20 pounds from underneath the bottle without the bottle falling over. Ready? Oh! That is good. That is good. Thank, Thank you. you. All it takes is a simple bang on the table to make the bottle jump up just long enough to quickly pull the note out from underneath. So now you owe me um, a beer. Excellent. I'll put this. <laughs> they say dogs are a man's best friend, and nowhere more so than in Britain. We love our pets so much that as a nation we spend hundreds of millions of pounds on them each year. But an owner's weak spot for their pets is a chance for hustlers to make some money as they're about to demonstrate in the missing dog scam. Jess has come to the park, seemingly working for the local council. Excuse me, I'm doing a survey about the local dog walking facilities in the park. Do you mind just answering a few questions for me? Okay. Is that okay? Can I uh, take your name? Uh, Patrick. Patrick. And what breed is Chelsea? A Springer Spaniel. A Springer Spaniel. So she's chipped? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Can I take your address as well, please? Uh, okay, send you a free pooper scooper. Oh, okay, there fine. There you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's amazing the information people will give away for a freebie. As well as home addresses, Jess finds out if people are in work and if they leave their dogs at home. And the all-important phone number. Best number's my mobile, 0773. With all the details of a handful of dogs and their owners, Jess has all the information she needs to set the scam in motion. That's great. Thank you ever so much for your time. Yeah, Have a lovely day. Okay, Thank you. One month later, Alex and Jess are applying the finishing touches in preparation for the hit on an unsuspecting dog owner. With their car turned into a taxi and a list of potential marks, Jess gets ready to make an important phone call. Hello? Oh, hi, is this um, Audrey Brown? Thank you. Oh, hi there, my love. Listen, my name's Jessica. I don't mean to alarm you. Uh, there's no need to worry. I think I've just found your dog. Is he um, like, is like white with uh, tan patches and he's, he's got, I think he's got something wrong with his eye as well. Yeah. Oh, d don't worry. <laughs> Listen, he's absolutely fine. Um, I've got your address here because obviously he's been chipped, hasn't he? That's how I've got your yeah. number. Um, it says that you live in N7. Are you there now? Because I can drop him off to you. Not, if you don't mind paying for a cab, I can jump in one now and I can come and meet you. Is that okay? Relieved that her dog is okay, she agrees. I'll see you soon. No problem, it's fine. Okay, bye. Bye. Job done. Where are we going? Turbotton Street. Turbotton Street. Cafe. Third on the right. Norman. At your service. You look great. Alex and Jess leave to return the Mark's dog and get some cash in the process. The fact that there's no dog in their car doesn't faze them. They arrive at the cafe to meet Boo Boo's owner. She's already agreed to pay for the fictitious cab fare, but she's going to have to cough up even more. I need to, I need to somehow clean that. The little thing was nervous, though. Unfortunately, on the journey there, it seems that Boo Boo has had a little accident. 
It stinks in here now. Yeah, I know. Jess's pregnant appearance is an added convincer. After all, who would think a pregnant lady is up to no good? It's your little doggy. There's, he's had a little bit of an accident. He's done a bit of a poo in the car. Oh, so my boyfriend's just jumped out with him. There was like a, a grass green at the top, but the taxi driver wants a bit more money, I'm afraid, and he's getting a little bit miffed off, I'm afraid. Right, well, well you're going to sort this out? Yeah, I need to yeah, get these I'm seats sorry, but he was just a little bit nervous, that's all. I can't pick up any rides. I can't do anything right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, how much do you want? Well, it's 30 quid to get the seats dry cleaned. And it was 20 pounds to get here? 20 pounds to get in, 30 okay? quid, because I've got to go and pay this up right now. Calm down. Um, I don't know if he's going to be coming from this way or this way, so I'm just going to walk up there. Can you just wait here? Oh. Me might be coming down here. Jess goes off to look for the dog, leaving the mark to sort out the payment for the fare and the unexpected damage to Alex's car seat. Where's she gone? Uh, who's paying me? I'm just going to go meet my boyfriend. Hi, are you paying me? Is that OK? Yeah. Look, I don't take dogs, all right? And I took that, I took okay, that, sorry, I took it as, for, as a favour. There's poo everywhere, all right? Listen, listen, I'm not going to argue done. with you, let all right? see what needs to be done. Here, I had to spray the whole thing with air freshener in there, but I need to go and work. So could you play, pay me my fare and I can go? It's all right, darling. I've, Thank I've you very much. Alex got more than he bargained for with this mark, but is making off with 50 quid, leaving her waiting for Jess to bring back her boo-boo. But Jess isn't looking for boo-boo or her boyfriend. She's jumping into Alex's car, and they're gone for good. Hold well on, Jess. Where to next? It's no wonder Alex didn't want the mark to look closely at the mess on his car seat. It was fake dog poo from a joke shop that Alex squirted into a bundle of tissues before they set off. The Mark is still looking for her dog, but she won't find him because, of course, her precious boo-boo is safely at home where she left him. But she said the dog was in the green up the road, but I went up to the green and the dog is not there. The cab driver was getting very angry and he wouldn't even let me look in the cab to see the poo. It might be a scam crystal because she hasn't turned up with boo-boo. At the time, I was so confused and I was worried about the dog so much. I didn't even connect everything together. Once you start involving a pet in a scam, common sense reason goes out of the window and people start thinking with their heart rather than their head. All they want to do is get their pet back. They need to stop and think, have they really got my dog? It might take a few minutes, but I'll wait. So remember, hustlers are everywhere, and people aren't always who or what you think. Mind my bags for me a second? Thank you. Appearances can be deceiving, so think twice and keep your wits and cash about you. You have to pay you £50. Pounds.